The worst and most pervasive form of Islamophobia now rules India. The hate-filled Hindutva ideology propagated by the fascist RSS BJP regime has unleashed a reign of fear and violence against India's 200 million Muslim strong community. Mob lynching by cow vigilantes, frequent pogroms such as the one in New Delhi last year, discriminatory citizenship laws to purge India of Muslims, and a campaign to destroy mosques across India and obliterate its Muslim heritage and history are all part of this criminal enterprise. New Delhi has also embarked on what it ominously calls the final solution for Jammu and Kashmir dispute. It has undertaken a series of illegal and unilateral measures in occupied Jammu and Kashmir since 5th August 2019. It has unleashed a reign of terror by an occupation force of 900,000. It has jailed senior Kashmiri leadership, imposed a, a clampdown on media and internet, violently suppressed peaceful protest, abducted 13,000 young Kashmiris and tortured hundreds of them. It has extrajudicially killed hundreds of innocent Kashmiris in fake encounters and imposed collective punishments by destroying entire neighborhoods and villages. We had unveiled a detailed dossier on gross and systematic violations of human rights by the Indian security forces in occupied Jammu and Kashmir. This repression is accompanied by illegal efforts to change the demographic structure of the occupied territory and transform it from a Muslim majority into a Muslim minority. Indian actions violate the resolutions of the United Nations Security Council on Jammu and Kashmir. They clearly prescribe, the resolutions clearly prescribe that the final disposition of the disputed territory should be decided by its people through a free and impartial plebiscite held under the UN auspices. India's action in occupied Jammu and Kashmir also violate international human rights and humanitarian laws, including the Fourth Geneva Convention, and amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity. It is unfortunate, very unfortunate, that the world's approach to violations of human rights lack even-handedness and even are selective geopolitical considerations or corporate interests, commercial interests, often compel major powers to overlook the transgressions of their affiliated countries. Such double standards and the most glaring in case of India, where this RSS BJP regime is being allowed to get away with human rights abuses with complete immunity. The most recent example of Indian barbarity was the forcible snatching of the mortal remains of the great Kashmiri leader, Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani, from his family denying him a proper Islamic funeral and burial in accordance with his wishes and the Muslim tradition. Devoid of any legal or moral sanction, this action has been against the basic norms of human decency. I call on this General Assembly to demand that Sayyid Gilani's mortal remains be allowed to be buried in the Cemetery of Martyrs with the appropriate Islamic rites. Mr. President. exercise our right of reply to one more attempt by the leader of Pakistan to tarnish the image 
of this August forum by bringing in matters internal to my country and going so far as to spew falsehoods on the world stage. While such statements deserve our collective contempt and sympathy for the mindset of the person who utters falsehood repeatedly, I am taking the floor to set the record straight. Regrettably, this is not the first time the leader of Pakistan has misused platforms provided by the UN to propagate false and malicious propaganda against my country and seeking in vain to divert the world's attention from the sad state of his country where terrorists enjoy free pass while the lives of ordinary people, especially those belonging to the minority communities, are turned upside down. Mr. President, member states are aware that Pakistan has an established history and policy of harboring, aiding, and actively supporting terrorists. This is a country which has been globally recognized as one openly supporting, training, financing, and arming terrorists as a matter of state policy. It holds the ignoble record of hosting the largest number of terrorists proscribed by the UN Security Council. Mr. President, we marked the solemn occasion of the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 terror attacks just a few days back. The world has not forgotten that the mastermind behind that dastardly event, Osama bin Laden, got shelter in Pakistan. Pakistan leadership continues to glorify him as a martyr. Regrettably, even today, we heard the leader of Pakistan trying to justify acts of terror. Such defense of terrorism is unacceptable in the modern world. We keep hearing that Pakistan is a victim of terrorism. This is the country which is an arsonist disguising itself as a firefighter. Pakistan nurtures terrorists in their backyard in the hope that they will only harm their neighbors. Our region, in fact, the entire world, has suffered because of their policies. On the other hand, they are trying to cover up sectarian violence in their country as acts of terror. Mr. President, this is also the country that still holds the despicable record in our region of having executed a religious and cultural genocide against the people of what is now Bangladesh. As we mark the 50th anniversary this year of that horrid event in history, there is not even an acknowledgement, much less accountability. Today, the minorities of Pakistan, the Sikhs, the Hindus, the Christians, live in constant fear and state-sponsored suppression of their rights. This is a regime where anti-Semitism is normalized by its leadership and even justified. Dissenting voices are muzzled daily and enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings are well documented. Mr. President, unlike Pakistan, India is a pluralistic democracy with a substantial population of minorities who have gone on to hold highest offices in the country, including as president, prime minister, chief justices, and chiefs of army staff. India is also a country with a free media and an independent judiciary that keeps a watch and protects our constitution. Pluralism is a concept which is very difficult to understand for Pakistan which constitutionally prohibits its minorities from aspiring for high offices of the state. The least they could do is introspect before exposing themselves to ridicule on the world stage. Finally, Mr. President, let me reiterate here that the entire union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh were, are, and will always be an integral and inalienable part of India. This includes the areas that are under the illegal occupation of Pakistan. We call upon Pakistan to immediately vacate all areas under its illegal occupation. Mr. President, allow me to be categorical about India's position. We desire normal relations with all our neighbors, including Pakistan. However, 
it is for Pakistan to work sincerely towards creating a conducive atmosphere, including by taking credible, verifiable, and irreversible actions to not allow any territory under its control to be used for cross-border terrorism against India in any manner. I thank you, Mr. President.